restored look through and they were labeling President Jammeh and the APRC for the wrongdoings, as if it was true. Uh, they came back on us, drove us out from our office, unceremoniously, as we speak, we have our air condition, our tanks, our TV, CCV cameras, all there. We were, we were restrained from taking them. Our vehicles were seized from us. I mean, uh, our bank accounts were frozen. Malik, our problem... Is it that they saw that the, the properties of the APRC belonged to the former president? But if they, if they, if they, if, if they, if they thought so, I mean, it was, it was going to be very wrong. APRC as a member and a senior member, I had been contributing to the party. And APRC properties, I am aware, when people, businessmen here, donated uh, pickup vehicles to the APRC, mm -hmm. those cannot belong, those cannot be government properties. Mm -hmm. But what, what is most amazing is that they did all those things just at the commencement. And th where are those vehicles, Malik? We, have, we understand that some of those vehicles went across the border. Some were sold out. <laughs> Nowhere can you trace those vehicles. Because if the vehicles were seized to be determined, uh, for ownership to be determined, what we expect is you park the vehicle somewhere until that is established. Mm. But the vehicles are nowhere. They are in thin air. And uh, the interesting thing is, three months into the coalition government, we all saw them, their high party officials, with brand new pickups. Right. Well, how did they come to? How did they come by those things? Three months into office, twenty years into office. Donations, you know? donations to President Barrow by an on uh, by, uh, anonymous, anonymous uh, as a, a fan or a supporter. That was the word out from the office of the president that these vehicles, these this coalition um, pickups, were a gift from an anonymous. Um, it, it was never said who gave the vehicle. No. But we know, but some people know where these vehicles come from. Yeah, but Malik, uh, if we believe... Again, I'm bringing in the issue of transparency. Yes, but it, what, what yes. I'm trying to say here, <laughs> if, they, if he's able to say that it was donated, why not APRC being donated for this then? But two, if you remember the 57 odd vehicles that we are given to the National Assembly, and there was an outcry. Mm. Those vehicles were, the insurance documents were in the name of President Adam Abaro. When there was an outcry from all corners, those insurance documents, some of them were retrieved, and new insurance documents in the name of the National Assembly were issued. All those things happened in our presence. So what I'm saying is, President Adam Abaro and his coalition should know that as we went out of government, they will also go out. So I have always said this, Africa is time for us to draw a line, Malik. We must try to, we must begin to respect our leaders mm -hmm. and give them the opportunity to leave office without harassment. Now, if they go wrong, and they do wrong as per law, they supply the law. But this witch hunt, this, uh, all these things can't move. And that's the style we have seen. As I said, we underwent all those things. Our people were arrested in numbers at the time. If you remember at the camp fender, Johnson, just can you like Johnson, can you find that? We will, we will come to that very shortly. But then you talked about smear campaign. Was this evident in the Jana Commission? Was, is it evident in the TRRC as it unfolds? Now, for me, I would say no for many reasons. One, prior to the Jana Commission's putting up a report, they've already sold President Jamez's properties. Meaning a determination has already occurred. They have reached judgment well before the commission. And the commission was just set up to meet their, uh, to, to qualify their judgment. And no other person, no other person who had been stained or found wanting or adversely affected, lost uh, property was sold, except the same time. Why? That goes to show Mali that these people were witch hunting President German. Because otherwise, what, what affects him should affect others. Mm -hmm. But no, it was only his properties. Two, the commission, if you observe, all the time, had been, let me establish this, the commission is not a law court. Mm -hmm. There are no cross-examinations of witnesses. Mm -hmm. You know, you just come and say what you feel to say, and then you go out. But what we have heard mostly from the commission was that money was withdrawn, who, who authorized that? President Gabbo. 
When it was withdrawn, where did it go? We gave it to President Jan. Now, Malik, in any reasonable law court that wants to establish justice, are those enough evidence mm. to point a finger at somebody? Look, anybody With, without, without cross-examination. Cross no, in fact, there are no documentations. Mm. Mm. You should be able to bring document to say that I got this money, I gave it to... Because we are, we are, we are governed by laws. Mm. Mm. And therefore, it, everything has a process. You know, but all those things we are missing in in the in the in the in the commission. Do you do you think that there was a loophole somewhere at State House at Jamie's time, where people took advantage of the fact that they can easily walk to the central bank and say, "I'm at the at the behest of the president. The president has sent me to come and withdraw," and you take that money from the central bank, the governor of the central bank thinking that this is from the president and gives you the money and you go, go away with the money. As you just said, all, all Gambians should have seen that possibility that people capitalize on the limitations and weaknesses of a situation to get what they want. That's why the onus is on you to prove mm -hmm. you, are, you, are, you are presumed innocent until proven, proven guilty. guilty. Mm -hmm. So well, how, can you, how can you just uh, go to establish somebody's guilt well even before the next things? So, in fact, should money be withdrawn just by just by a signed document, mm. a, a piece of paper? I mean, should that happen? No. And uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, should should I, for instance, go to the central bank to say that I am sent to to receive money? Is that what the law says? Mm. Why should it happen? And how, why do you now have to point to the former president? Does it mean all the wrongs that are happening now, at the end of the day? When there is a commission against the Barrow administration, anybody who says that Barrow assigned me should be taken for, should be taken for that. Is that so? <laughs> so what we are saying, there are a lot of things we must look. That's why I said to President Barrow, and I want to reiterate it here, that a few clique of people in his administration, whom I believe don't even want his administration, are creating a lot of havoc and may create instability in the Gambia. By, by personalizing issues and using their powers, abusing their powers to do what they want. We are all citizens. We can't, some, some, we will never tolerate. In other words, President Barrow should be mindful of the group of people that surround him, give him in such advice? Yes. I'll give you an example. If you remember at the Ghana Commission, you remember Kurang, the secretary to the commission. Mm -hmm. he Who made, resigned, He yes. made allegations. Mm -hmm against uh, the lead council, council yes council, mm -hmm. and uh, was reported to the state house and uh, a, a conflict of interest happened in a lot of cases if you remember the social security issue the negotiation he was their lawyer and a lot of things internal things that were happening mm -hmm. which he was not satisfied mm -hmm. with and felt that the lady should go resign but what is great was mm -hmm. that the lady so far she her names appeared should have come to the commission to either to clear herself up. But no, that was put aside. The other thing is, if the law provides, section 2 or 3 of the Constitution, if I am if I'm not wrong, provides that at the end of the commission, prior to the commission submitting their report to the president, mm. all those people who are adversely affected should be informed by the commission in writing. So that they will, uh, and, and the reasons why. Mm. So that mm. within three months, they will have a right to appeal to the appeal court. Mm. But the, those that I have contacted, none of them have been contacted by the commission up to the time the government white paper came out. Why those, why those uh, limitations in them, deliberate limitations? So there were gross anomalies yes, no, at the end of the day. And deliberate for that matter. Okay. They know it. Mm. <laughs> they are all, most of them are legal, they were legal, uh, Minded people. renowned, re re renowned legal councils. Mm. So they deliberately omitted mm. those things mm. to get people's uh, which hunted and then foul, there was foul play. If you look at Barrow's, uh, the government's white paper, mm. recommendations of the commission, if it affects somebody who is in governance or who is part of them, they will not accept it. And then to those others, the they, will, they, 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 they will accept it. Mm. Mm. Uh, what, what, what came to my mind? What, 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 how did you feel in such instance when some people who were recommended to be or who were found to be guilty 
and the recommendations made to government and government rejected. How do you find that? How do you feel about that? Very bad. It's selective justice. Mm. We call it selective justice. Mm. Those in your good books, get them exonerated. Those who are, whom you presume to be your adversaries, you try to return them and bully them. Mm. Mm. But mm. Those, may, those you think are your adversaries may be your good people. Mm. And those that you think are your supporters are the people who are digging the hole for you. I want to say this. That all those things happen here. Uh, so I, let's get Jame out. Let's smear him. Let's make him look so black that nobody in the Gambia or every Gambian will say Jame was bad. Was that the case? Yes, that was the intent. Mm -hmm. But interestingly, there are those uh, derogatory comments mm -hmm. and adverse reports against Jame and the APRC serves as manure for the APRC. Mm -hmm. We grow from strength to strength. Mm -hmm. Because Gambians have come to realize that most of these things are allegations and are not unf are unfounded allegations. And that they have not seen anything yet that goes to satisfy them as to the promises made to them. And they lamented what they have lost during the APRC regime. So that is, that is, that is the truth in, 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 uh, if you look at it. And uh, Malik, you know, the justice system, I'm beginning to be very worried with the justice system. You know, you have the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Malik, uh, who can publicly at a meeting with uh, the security forces, soldiers, congratulate those, congratulate them for making the most attempts on an elected government. In the Barrow <laughs> administration. In the Barrow administration. Because when he speaks, he speaks on behalf of the Barrow administration. Mm. So, this, just imagine those, those, even if those things are at heart, you keep them. Mm. For the purpose of reconciliation and moving the country forward, mm. as leaders, there are certain things you don't utter. And even if you utter them, you must know how to utter them. Otherwise, it can bring, it can disintegrate the, the, whole, the whole social fabric. And this is what is happening. Comments like that, and many, many, many comments. If you, if you, if you remember, when the, when, the, when the Commission of Inquiry was reporting, was delivering their report to the president, his comment, the Attorney General at the time, said, Gambia is now clear to all Gambians what Jame and his cohorts embezzled over billions of dollars of the Gambian people. <laughs> I mean, from a commission of inquiry, <laughs> a commission of not a law court. And that, that also is inconclusive until government's white paper comes, comes out. out. You on receiving it, you are establishing the facts that this is what happened. You can see that he's already prejudiced. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. these are things that I want Gambians to realize. I want Gambians to realize that today, yesterday was there, we today, tomorrow will come. But we should all be interested in ensuring a more, more cohesive Gambia and try to correct all the errors that might have happened mm -hmm. to move forward. It's not a matter of which one. When Gambia's properties were sold here, mm -hmm. yeah, just, uh, just before commissions, this thing, his hearts of cattle were sold. Some of the comments they told me was that uh, it is difficult to maintain them, Malik. <laughs> and one, one man, President Jame alone, can maintain his house of cattle. A whole government with an agricultural ministry, a veterinary department cannot maintain. They sold in the hearts of cattle. How many were sold, we don't know. To whom it was sold, we don't know. And we were informed by some reliable sources that some of those hearts of cattle and vehicles of President Jame we are, we are bought by some of them themselves, those with the political hierarchy. Some of them have hearts of cattle. Some of them, we see them driving in, Jammes, in President Jammes vehicles. Mm. So what is happening? How much? So we challenge President Adam Abaro to come out with a comprehensive list of the, no, the number of hearts, uh, the number of cattle that was sold, mm -hmm. to whom and how much. Mm -hmm. The vehicles, who bought the vehicles and how much were the vehicles sold. All these things happen here. And Malik, I must say this before you pass it. When our vehicles were seized, we wrote to the Attorney General that these are our party vehicles and our party accounts. And then we, 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 later we were called at the police. And then we said, to, we said to them the same things. They said it was frozen by the commission. But Malik, the most interesting thing is, <laughs> look at the government white paper. 
no mention of our vehicles that were seized mm. so soon. So it means they are gone into thin air. Nowhere to be seen. Some of our members were able to see some of our vehicles at other corners where they were get being painted and they, photo they, they photographed, they, they get a picture of it. Some of the, some of the buses, mm. uh, the mini, uh, the coasters mm. were seen somewhere. A lot of things have happened. But our vehicles are nowhere to be seen. And the commission made no statement. The government white paper made no statement about our vehicles. Mm. What is happening? Mm. Last word, we want to send to President Adam Abaro. We are drafting a letter. Please return our vehicles. So far, you have not found anything in the government white paper that goes to determine the fate of our vehicles. We want our vehicles back. We will not sit back to look at them playing uh, playing with us when they have their brand new pickups going about it. Mm. They cannot seize our liberty. Mm. That's the message I want to send to President Adam Abaro. And I want President Adam Abaro to be aware of some of the people who tell him otherwise. Yes, that's very important. Let me take you to another commission, the TRRC. Are you surprised with the revelations coming out? I am not. And the accusations leveled against the former president that he gave instructions Yes, you see, Malik, I want to, I want to uh, say one thing. We, as a party, would want to establish the, uh, the TRC to establish the truth and nothing but the, but truth, the truth to enable Gambians to pardon each other and to reconcile. Mm -hmm. Fundamental. What we have observed and we have cried over it at the onset was the composition of the TRC. Alaji Baro, who in the December 38th coup of 2014 mm -hmm. was involved, he escaped the Gambia, mm -hmm. went to the United States, and uh, he was convicted. Mm -hmm. On his return to the Gambia after President Jamel's departure, a red carpet welcome by the government of the Gambia. For a coupist, mm. are you legalizing coup d'etat? How, however much you may... You may you may hate President Jame or the APRC. Mm. We should discourage coup mm. They did that. Not stopping there, he is part of the lead uh, researchers at the, at, the, at the TRRC to establish the facts about Jame that he wanted to overthrow violently. Now he has the opportunity to finish him up with a, with a pen and no, no longer with a gun. Mm. We, don't, we will not trust that. Mm -hmm. The other thing we want to say is, SFL, we observed made certain comments that for us for a lead council who wants who wants to uh, come out with facts should avoid saying to win the hearts of all Gambians. When Yankuba Ture went there, until we all saw that Yankuba never wanted to talk in house. But they brought him out, and then uh, at a stage he refused to talk, and he said they will take him to the Attorney General to charge him for contact. Fair enough. Just immediately after he had a press conference with the media, and in his statement he said that the junta were guilty of genocide. In the council of mm. the DRRC. When the ICC themselves, who are more qualified and better placed, said nothing happened in the Gambia from 1994 to 2017 that would warrant anybody to go to the TRRC. Who is SFL to determine that? He made those men. He again said the indemnity clause in the Constitution was meant only for the Gunter people. If you look at the consequential clauses of the 1997 Constitution, mm -hmm. section 13, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Even messengers are covered, mm -hmm. are indemnified. SFL made all those comments. And when he, when Yankuba was sent to by Attorney General, the first comment by Tambedu did was, he will teach him a lesson. In other words, he's already taken a position. He's already taken a position. And it means, he, so far, he has, he has wielded the power it's with him. He wants to abuse it. And that's mm. what he did. Mm. What he said was what he did. We, what happened, the first thing was to charge Yankuba Ture for murder. 
the content came later from Moda. Mm. Moda. <laughs> and his language thing admired too. And President Adama Baron knows all these things. And all these things are being unveiled in his own presence. Do you see President Barrow as being weak? Or his hands are tied? Or he's a novice? Yeah, you see, I, I want to believe that uh, people are capitalizing on his inexperience in governance. Mm. And uh, for me, those that probably he trusted, for me, they themselves don't want him. If you want your leader, especially a leader that came in on the platform of rule of law, democracy, good governance, and a new Gambia, mm. you should be able to advise him honestly. Mm. And that, that is lucky. That is lucky. Let me take you to some recent situations that took place. President Baro went to Parliament, and uh, not the National Assembly, or Parliament, because when the sovereign gets into the National Assembly, it assumes the name of Parliament, and he de delivered the State of the Nation's address. Unfortunately, there should have been an adjournment debate, of which the Vice President should have been in there for, to represent the President on any questions that members will want to ask regarding the, uh, the, 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 the president's uh, statement. But unfortunately, the vice president was in town. And I think you, I said this here uh, to one of uh, to the UDP spokesperson that there was a lapse in government not knowing that the vice president wasn't in town and that nobody was allocated, was said to go and represent the president, because, the vice president, because the vice president is in New York. What is your take on that? You have been in, in the National Assembly for a very long time, and you know the procedures of the National Assembly. You see, the National Assembly reserves the right to call on any public office holder to the National Assembly mm. to answer questions or to clarify issues. Mm. Anybody. Two, when the National Assembly calls, whatever duty you are doing, you put it off. Mm. If you are to travel, put it off. Mm. If you are to have a meeting, whatever you are doing, you put it off. Mm. It's mm. now time for accountability. Mm. Mm. You put it off. Except you, you, you communicate to the National Assembly, and then they believe or they see that you, they can grant you that distance. Mm -hmm. As regards uh, uh, the President's speech, what I want to say about that is, in fact, is the purpose of that statement, the President's speech, to Parliament. You know, the Constitution provided the President should uh, uh, report to Parliament, make a speech to the Parliament for governance programs for the year. You see, that is anticipated at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. When we went through a budget and government had their programs, they take it to Parliament and the Parliament debates it and they look at comments and all the things to make the necessary adjustments. Mm. But you bring, a, uh, you bring the speech at the end of a year mm. uh, about a program that uh, almost nine, ten months it's are lapse, gone. Lapse. I mean, you only have one, two months. Mm. If, if it does, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, uh, it's not the best. Mm. It's not the best. Now, when the president made a speech, usually when he, he delivers his speeches, uh, there is a debate on the speech mm. immediately after. Usually there is a span of one, two days to allow MPs to digest mm. and do research on it. Now, the president, parliament can accept anybody delegated mm. by the president. Mm. But constitutionally, is the president, the president can be only be represented by the vice president. Mm. So if parliament insists either on the president or the vice president, they are right. Mm. Constitutionally, they are right. Mm. And the vice president should have come. But then he traveled. But it's very... I was amazed when I saw what the Vice President said, Mali. Mm. I've just told that is when she came to from New York from and New York. He came to address the... Address yes, Mali. yes, yes, yes. And I looked at the clip. Mm. I got so disturbed. And it goes to qualify what I just told you about President Adam Abaro. The Vice President is at Parliament in the capacity of the President. Delegated by the president is the president who made the speeches and he answers on behalf of the president So whatever he said at parliament is what the president had told Gambians and parliament mm -hmm. 
the vice president said the phoning cats enjoy free electricity, free water, free food <laughs> when Gambians were suffering. So those people cannot talk. It's President Barrow who said it. That's why I said President Barrow should be mindful of people who are with him. This is not reconciliatory. Mm -hmm. It is not correct. For it you, is, that was erroneous. That wasn't it is true. Not only, it is not only non-reconciliatory, mm, but it mm. is not true. Mm, mm. For Ninkas, we are paying for electricity. Let me say this. Mm. For Ninkas was one of the last regions to enjoy electricity. Mm. Electricity came to Banjul, Bikama, went to uh, the West... NBR, URR, CRR. Mm -hmm. West Coast was the last place to have electricity. Mm. And the day we are paying for electricity, they were buying their own of, uh, bags of rice, they are paying for their water. So that was a misleading statement. Allegedly said by the vice president on behalf of <coughs> President Adam Abad. <coughs> and my friend, if you remember, uh, Adelaide Sosa made the same comments when the, when the TRRC went to UK. He said, the obstacle to reconciliation in the Gambia, he said, are the jollers and the four leaders. Oh my God. Leading people, leaders, vice chairperson of the TRRC could make those comments publicly. You think that goes to reconcile people when it is in fact all full of fallacies? It's not true. That's not true. For Ninkas and jollers in particular are, more, are the most resilient, law-abiding, and they accept any leadership. Mm. The PPP, the core of the Jolas were all the PPP. They serve people. They are non-violent. They are not greedy. How can somebody sit and accuse those people of that? Just because President Jame is Jola. You accuse the whole of Foninkas. And remember, in Fonyi it's not only Jolas. Mm -hmm. You have Maninkas, Manjago, Sarahules, every, almost every mm -hmm. tribe is there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these are very negative comments and usually untrue statements. All what they said are false, misleading statements, and goes to put Gambians further apart instead of recon reconciling Gambians. And I believe President Barrow is out to reconcile Gambians. But his players are out to bring this unity and of course, at the end, chaos and confusion in the Gambia. Oh, very recently, $50 million was um, given out as reparation to uh, victims of the TRRC. And it was claimed that this $50 million came from monies um, recovered from the sale of Jamais properties. Was it right? Mali, it is unfortunate, as I said that uh, under the President Adam Barrow's leadership and watch, we've seen President, former President Jammes' properties being vandalized, sold anyhow they like. I know that President Adam Barrow and most of his people have purchased land and properties here in the Gambia mm. during their tenure. They have developed properties during their tenure. If TRRC people should be compensated or victims should be compensated, we have no objection. Mm. But the money should be sought by government and people compensated. The properties of Yaya Jammin sold out so far. I told you, his house of cattle, I'm not talking about houses and properties, mm -hmm. I'm talking about his vehicles and the properties at his canal and and uh, state house. Malik runs into billions of dollars. In fact, if we enumerate the articles that, that we are taking away from canal his trucks, his, his bulldozers, his tiles, uh, containers of tiles, marble tiles for the mosque he was building. 
a lot, lot of them were all out. The interesting thing was, once when I was talking to him, he, he never got very bad about it. His only regret was that if it were not taken personally and it was used for the Gambian people, mm. it would not have mattered. Mm. So mm. people vandalized it and people used it for themselves. Mm. So if you tell me, Yamas vehicles alone, Malik, <laughs> his vehicles alone, trucks, these VIP vehicles, run into millions and millions of terraces. None of these people will have been able to purchase one. We all saw the vehicles, we all know them, we know how expensive they were. Now, if they tell us they, we are not against reparation for victims, for mm -hmm. will have to. Let people be compensated, let Gambians reconcile, let's move forward, let's correct the errors of the past and move forward. All what Gambians need is for us to move forward. No system is perfect. As good as President Adam Abaro may be, when the time comes and you look into his governance structures, you will find a lot of loopholes. He could face the same thing as President Jan Mufil. Is that what he wants? Shouldn't we, shouldn't we pass that stage now in Africa? Mm. Leaders in the West, despite their challenges they underwent, they are living in their homes. They have been critically observed, even sometimes uh, blamed for whatever one may have. But they live in dignity because they were leaders. Most of the time, people don't want to leave go office because in Africa, mostly if you leave office, you become a victim. Either you are jailed, you are humiliated, you are, you, 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 you are exiled, or, so, or even you are killed. Can, can we continue? Can we afford to continue on that trend? Mm. So these are the challenges we have. People tend to believe and make APRC as if we don't want those things. We want the truth to be established. And that will enable every Gambian to learn from it, to look at our strengths. Malik, so since Jammeh left here, I am not fortunate to hear one statement from government, radio or whatever, to say that President Jammeh and his government did this good for the Gambia. It's always negative. Always negative. Mm. And what we have done in this country, nobody can rob it. Mm. It will be in the annals of Gambian history till time immemorial. I can assure you that. Let me turn my attention now to where President Barrow finds himself vis-a-vis -vis the coalition that set him up as the president of the Republic of the Gambia. There's a big uh, there, there, there seems to be a, a serious clash between President Barrow and the coalition regarding his tenure in office. I'm sure you're on the outside, but also you're looking at the inside. Yes, Malik. You know, if you, if you, if you, if you talk to my people, uh, APRC people, I told them since April last year, mm. 2017, that the coalition is in this area. Mm. The coalition came together to put up an independent candidate for the coalition. That became Adam Abaro. We go to the legis legislative elections, parliamentary elections. Each of the political parties, called the, they call it strategic alliance, mm -hmm. came with their own parties. Mm -hmm. That's where I knew There's that trouble. Our, uh, President Barrow is in trouble. Mm. Because they should have come out with coalition MPs mm -hmm. that would support the agenda of President Adam Abaro, which is their coalition, to move the Gambia forward. But you know what happened? Everybody wants leadership. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to, uh, to be where President Adam Abaro was. And nobody cared for him. And they all went on their own. From that time, I knew. Now, for me, I don't think the coalition exists. I, do, I heard that uh, Fatumata Jalo and others went and, uh, and, uh, endorsed. The president and they endorsed a 5 but, mm, mm. You know, <laughs> We are all aware that there was, a, there was an agreement among the coalition for a three-year term. Mm. Equally, we are aware that the constitution provides for five years for the president, mm. term of five years. Mm. But it is in the same constitution, the president after one month, after two years, after can, one year, can, can resign. resign. Absolutely. So if uh, President Adam Abaro wants, 
he can uh, resign mm -hmm. because of the three years mm -hmm. and then we move forward. Mm -hmm. But if he also decides that he will stay for the, what, the, what the Constitution provides, so be it. So be it, because the Constitution supersedes the agreement. Mm. All what people can say is, I don't know, President Barrow never honored his promises and a lot of things. But we cannot, you cannot do anything about mm. it. Mm. Cannot, what can you do? If you, cannot, if you want to violently overthrow a government, it's illegal. Mm. Right. Now, we as a party, APS, we have said it very clear. Since at the onset, Malik, we should have been the first people to say, President Barrow, you said three years, come down. Because that seat was our seat. Mm. We, should be, we should be more antagonistic to President Adam Barrow. But we told them that we are an opposition with a difference, meaning that we want to be ethical and that we govern by morality and the rule of law. That's what we wanted to say. Now, we as a party, our position is very clear. If President Adam Barrow comes down with the three-year thing and agrees to it, we are ready for elections. If he goes for his five years, so be it. We are not, we are not siding any side. But we have, we, we sent word that we are Gambians. And if in resolving this problem would put the entire Gambia into turmoil, we would take our position. <laughs> And I will tell you, Malik, we, for us, we have the number. It matters in politics. Whatever side, if we say President Barrow should come down, I am sure he will come down. He will, he will produce the number that will warrant him to come down. If we say President Barrow is for five years, according to the Constitution, he can be comfortable in his house and he can stay. So, but we don't want to read that situation. Mm. No wonder, come November, end of November, Malik, you are invited with all media houses. We will prove to Gambians once again that APRC is the single, is the single biggest party in this country. We will produce numbers. You know, they will tell you they came from Foley. May I send signals to government now from today until November end, they let them close their borders to for any foreign person coming into the country. We will come out in our number to show Gambians, numbers that have hitherto never happened in the Gambia, even during President Jammeh's time. And uh, two, you see, President Jammeh, for most Gambians, will die to appreciate what he had done for the Gambian people. Mm. We are not saying that we made no mistakes. No, yes. one, no one is perfect. No one is perfect. But the good that we have done, most Gambians cannot forget it. Mm. Mm. Yes. Um, Honorable, uh, we've seen some recent troubles with government. Leakages of documents, the passport saga, the sacking of my party, the employment of my party again as advisor to the president, and my party resigning his, res uh, his appointment as special advisor to the president. These are all incidents that have been they are coming out. What do you make out of them? You see, uh, in fact, he apologized. My party, uh, let me just amplify that, apologized to the people of Funi while he was interior minister, saying that he was well, given a briefing on what he did not find on the ground. Yeah. Thank you very much. You see, this, all these things, Mali, <coughs> should be learning lessons for President Adam Abarro. Mm -hmm. These incidences. If you have a committed core group, loyalists, mature people who mm. have the love of Gambia, mm -hmm. most of these things will not have happened as they are recording every now and then. Mm -hmm. You should learn from those people. The passport saga is very disgraceful. Mm. In fact, as of today, Gambia ordinary pass passport is maybe more respectable mm -hmm. than Gambia diplomatic passport. Mm -hmm. What the two things that I, I saw in this was that one, looking at the saga, when I looked at the documents that I have received, I, Malik, I saw a passport number issued to a Gambian 
uh, to a youth, 90 something bomb. <laughs> and uh, it is said, uh, uh, this is executive. <laughs> the passport number was D000114 something, 1400 and something. That was around mid July 2019. <laughs> mm. You have another passport, passport issued towards the end of the same July of 2019 with passport number D00 16,000 and something. Passport. Meaning that 2,000 passports? No, no not 2,000. Over 13,000 passports were issued between a period of two weeks at most. <laughs> Malik. Yes. Now, the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, we all witnessed that he had a passport for his uh, for his mother, stepmother, mm. his wife, and uh, his sisters. Mm. And uh, the excuse written was that they go, they are old, and they, are, they go on pilgrimage, and they, they should be accorded. Mm. Passports are issued mm -hmm. in the service of the Gambia government. Mm -hmm. You have to be in the service of Gambia government. Mm -hmm. And he said it was not him. He applied, mm -hmm. and it was approved by President Adam Abaro. Now, he's shifting the blame to President Adam Abaro. But what I said was, if I were in his shoes, and a legal man for that matter, mm -hmm. even if it is a privilege, mm -hmm. because of morality and uh, an ethical behavior, and because he has posed himself as the champion of what is right and what is moral, I would not have engaged in those things, even if it is my right. Now he came back to return the passport. He knew very well. See, those things happen because Allah wants Gambians to know who he is. Batambedu came out here as a young professional that comes to champion decency and morality, rule of law, good governance. But on the whole, he is full, he is full of uh, uh, vengeance. He has some scores to settle. And he thinks he can use his power of office to settle those things. That's why those things happen. As regards my May was minister, he was removed, he was appointed as advisor, and uh, he has resigned. <coughs> and uh, as he rightly said, I know during his time, I heard him say that uh, Fonyu was a threat, security threat, according to intelligence, proximity to customers, etc., etc. Mm. But any Gambian, for that matter, any Gambian knows the people of Fulu. They are not the type of people who are power hungry. Mm. We know them here. They are humble. But even if that happens, why specifically Fonyi? Ask yourself that question. When, 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 when President Jame took over from Jawara, he never harassed the people of Barajali or Nyan. Nor did he harass the people of Jikama, where he resided. Look, there are people in Foni who are not in support of President Yame. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, he, what he said is true. Because some 14 year old boys, school going ages, nursing mothers, were arrested at mm -hmm. Fender. I, I, I used to confront him. We, I used to have a lot of dialogue with my, my, uh, my party. And I used to say it at my press conferences. Because we believe that it's not confrontation, but it should be dialogue. Let's mm. talk. Mm. That's, the, that's the spirit of the opposition we want to introduce. Government is our government. Let's, if you have challenges, let's talk with them. And in these circumstances, I appreciated the fact that any time I call my, we talk. We, whether we disagree and mostly we solve the problems. Mostly. That opened me up. I cherished. Mm. He could have closed his doors. And that I, I, that's why anywhere I talk, despite whatever Gambians say, I will say I will thank my party for opening his doors for dialogue on issues that prevailed those days. They were very challenging issues. 
I remember one day I called Mike at night. Mm. He told me he was traveling the following morning. And I said, if you travel, there will be a problem here mm. because we will not wait. Mm. He said, let's meet early in the morning. And Mike made sure that we met at, at a junction at, at Leather and we met. Mm. We discussed and he solved the problem on the spot. Mm. So I, I, I mean, I mean, whatever he might have done, the good that he has done, we must, we must, we must thank him for that. They had, they had their limitations, their weaknesses, probably ill advice, probably wrong, wrong uh, signals from the intelligence, whatever. But I know, well, like the, the shooting of Haruna Gata. Mm -hmm. The shooting of Haruna Gata was unwarranted. A group of people living in the area felt that they were so pressurized that they have to vent out their grievances, which they have a right. In putting it down, you, leave, you need live ammunition to shoot them to death. And what happened at that time? Let me tell you, Malik. I went there, and uh, I went to the funeral. You cannot get youths into the, uh, at the funeral there. All the youths were in the bush. They introduced an illegal curfew. Any youth who is seen at any time, you are arrested. So they will go into the bush, and uh, around 10 o'clock, they told me, you must go to bed. Otherwise, if they meet you, you have a problem. And when we checked to government, they said they never introduced coffee. But then we call it illegal coffee. Some people use their powers mm -hmm. to introduce us, to harass those people. So all these things happen. If you remember in, in, in this place, in uh, Sibano, mm. when, the, when, the, when the Senegalese security forces at Buyam followed a vehicle with, uh, with uh, timber, just before the Sibanon police station, got him there, pulled him out, beat him up, and tied him. In the Gambia, new Gambia, rule of law and democracy. And when the MP of the area came and was trying to talk to the, 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 uh, the, the, so, yeah. the Senegalese people, mm -hmm. they never cared. Even the police officer, the senior police commander, they were not interested in him. Mm -hmm. Imagine, in the Gambia. All those things happen in Foley and many, many more. So what we are saying is, for President Barrow to come down, he said he is president of the all Gambians, which we believe is true. He is the mm. president of all those, whether you vote for him or not. But in the application of laws, mm. he must show that also. Mm -hmm. He cannot victimize a section mm -mm. and leave others. That's what is happening in this country. Um, Honorable, we will be running into elections come 2021 i'm sure there will be congress in 2020 for all um, political parties um, we understand from the iec that there are going to be numerous parties uh, to sprout from here and there and uh, that will make a very interesting uh, um, and, uh, and elections if there was going to be any tactical Alliance. I'm sorry to use the word tactical again. <laughs> yeah. The tactical provision that has seemed to have failed on its way to what some very um, uh, professional politicians wanted. That has gone down the drain. Uh, but if there was going to be any tactical alliance uh, between the APRC and a supposedly borough government led, 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 led party, would APRC think, think of um, joining Barrow if there is a common enemy? You see, uh, Malik, in politics, you don't have permanent enemies. Mm. You have permanent interests. Mm -hmm. Now, and, uh, the, the, uh, as you said, many political parties may start out. We've had this for the past one and a half, two years, mm. and yet only one political party into that. But we want to see more so that the political field will be more interesting and Gambians will decide based on issues addressed. Mm -hmm. Now, for us as a party, we can go into alliance with any political party as for our interests and the interests of the Gambian people. Mm -hmm. It's negotiations. You agree, we go forward. We, do, we, we disagree, you go your way, I go my way. Mm -hmm. All trying each trying to ensure that your interest is well protected and Gambian people's interest is protected. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, you must know that uh, in the game of politics, mm -hmm. and politics is all about number. Mm -hmm. huh? So the one with the most people mm -hmm. tend to 
we're on the ones with the weaker number of people, smaller number of people. Just like the coalition. Mm. When the coalition sprouts out, the UDP are saying is that the coalition is a UDP government. Mm. It's a UDP thing. Because mm. they thought they were the biggest party mm. at the time we were among the coalition. Mm. 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 So for us, we, we don't rule out any negotiation with anybody based on common interests and the interests of the Gambian people. Whatever we do for us uh, as a party, not only the interests of the APRC mm. we, we look into, but <coughs> the bigger picture of the interests of the Gambian people. Mm. Mm. Yes. Okay, Honorable, um, one more, there will be one more last question, but there is one that will precede that. What is the way forward now for the APRC? You see, APRC, we are making strides, Mali. Mm. You know, if you remember when we went to Congress in December of 2018, mm -hmm. we came out with a program of action. And that's what we have been implementing. Because we had then believed that we are going into elections come end of three years. So our program of action was, to, was, was, was for one year. In fact, that is what is leading to this November uh, uh, golden mega rally. Mm. Yes. But we are growing from strength to strength every day. The beauty of the party, mm. I must thank all APRC militants, supporters, and sympathizers, is that Malik, whatever we do comes from the people. We don't have money anywhere, in any account. What's happened is, we have programs. People keep in. They have ten dollars, hundred dollars, two hundred, one thousand dollars. If you look at, if you if you see our last rally at Vikama, at SSP, ninety nine point nine percent of the vehicles you see there were brought in by the people themselves. We only provide about five, seven, five or ten vehicles for some delegates coming from URL, CRR, and the others. All vehicles were done by the people. All the expenses that we were able to meet, feeding and all these things, the money came from the people. That's why we said APRs is big. Because where people are willing to put in their monies, it means they belong to that party. There are no more things. Somebody may go to a political party to get something from it. But mm. for the party, you keep in. You know? So that is, that is our, that's, uh, that's our biggest strength. Now, we are making strategies. We are also trying to formulate ways and strategies mm. to be able to raise funds for it. Mm -hmm. But we have, we have witnessed from the 2017 at the Buva Zone to, to our rally, uh, the, youth, uh, the rally at Kotu, the SSP, the youth rally. We have seen that APRC, our tour, we went on a nationwide tour to all the corners of the Gambia. Where did that money come from? From the people themselves. We went with over 50 to 80 vehicles. Mm -hmm. Where did those vehicles come from? And they are fueling, feeding, and all these things from the people themselves. So APRC is here to stay. And we must thank all APRC militants, sympathizers, members, both here and the diaspora, for their commitment to the party. And inshallah, God will reward us all sooner than later. The final question honorable as we come to the end of this um interview um it's a test of your knowledge and it's a very trivial question something we just play around with and we test your knowledge how many first ladies have the gambia ever got first ladies first ladies post independent no first ladies fatima tabaro is a lady first lady uh. <laughs> Yes. No, what I'm saying is, yes, for firstly. independence, no, no, for this, yes, for the, from, from independence. From independence. Yes. For the best of my knowledge. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Since eight. Gandhi had a prime I minister. I, I, I think eight. No, wrong. <laughs> uh, okay. You're wrong. <laughs> there uh, were four first ladies. Four? Yeah, we were four, four first ladies. No. Augusta uh, Jawara, the first wife of Sadauda. Yes. Uh, Lady Chilev Jawara yes. and um, Lady Zainab Jawara. Uh, Jamie? No, and Jamie wasn't first lady. She was just lady. You can only have one first lady. You uh, okay, okay, all right, okay, all right, okay. Honorable, okay, there okay. are four first ladies. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, August yeah. Jawara, yeah. Chile Jawara, Zainab Jawara, yeah. and Fatima Tabaro. Yeah, right. Honorable, yeah. it's been a pleasure to have you on the show. That was the Honorable uh, Fabakari Tombong Jata. He's the interim president, uh, party leader of the APRC party. He was with me on the program. Talk to Malik Jones. I am counting on next week, if it's very possible, if he's not out of town, my fatty to be my guest here on this platform. Until then, have a good evening and bye-bye.